Well, I tell you what, Tennessee Volunteer Football is making a resurgence right now. And they've got a, a cornerback commit in Caleb Beasley that I'm assuming Notre Dame is keeping their eye on. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, Notre Dame's on usually on the end of, at least how it feels that Notre Dame's on the end of getting players flipped from Notre Dame elsewhere. But in all honesty, it, it kind of evens out. Notre Dame flips a ton of players elsewhere in the in last cycle. Kenny Minchie. Bubakar Traore, you know, the Irish will have players flip in, flip out, just, just how it goes. Uh, Beasley is one that I like Notre Dame to land last summer. Darren um, had a prediction in for, for him to land at Notre Dame. Didn't work out. Committed to Tennessee last October. The timing was a surprise. I didn't see him popping that early. But again, when you have these early commitments, a lot of times it's like, mm, did I did I make this one too early? I'm gonna just still kind of keep my options open a little bit. And Blue and Gold reported uh, last was it Thursday or, or Friday that Beasley's visiting Notre Dame uh, April 1st, and he's also gonna be at Tennessee March 25th and Auburn a couple days after the Tennessee trip. So Notre Dame's still working on it. Marcus Freeman was at his school in January. It's it's still a recruiting battle. Um, yeah, Notre Dame obviously has ground to make up in Tennessee. Every school does. Um, you know, he's a big part of that Tennessee class. He's visiting there all the time. It's the in-state school. But if he ends up signing with Tennessee, it won't be due to a lack of effort by Notre Dame. Unofficial visit April 1st, I should mention. Notre Dame uh, still, to my knowledge, has that little policy where if you're committed elsewhere, we're not going to bring you on an official visit here. You need to decommit from that school if you're going to do that. So this is an unofficial visit, Darren. I notice he's from Lipscomb Academy. Is that Trent Dilfer's old team? It is. Yep, that so is. Head coach at UAB now, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's so, correct. Pretty good players coming out of Lipson Academy. All right, Mike Singer, Darren Pritchard with you. Who are the top candidates to join Aeneas Williams on the Notre Dame 2004 or 2024 running back commit list? Yeah, 2004 taking us back, Darren. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I actually had a story on Aeneas Williams um, earlier today. So I was like, yeah, this is probably a good time to uh, – and to bring up who could be, you know, potentially joining him. Williams, uh, a four-star running back commit for the Fighting Irish um, out of Hannibal, Missouri. Uh, not, you know, uh, the, the most fertile recruiting ground out there. But, uh, yeah, Notre Dame goes where the, the talent is. So, Williams committed to Notre Dame in December. And, folks, yeah, you can read uh, my article at Blue and Gold uh, recapping kind of where things stand with him after all the coaching news, but you know, Darren, they've offered a bunch of running backs and there's two guys to me that kind of stand out as who they potentially could have joined Williams. I think the guy that's at the top of the board right now is Kedron Young from Lufkin, Texas. Um, you know, he, big time offer lists, you know, and I know he's blown up a lot recently, uh, Michigan and Texas, a couple of his recent offers, but from mm -hmm. when I talked to him and I had an article posted on him uh, last Friday, looked like a Texas tech, Notre Dame battle. Texas tech's actually doing a really good job in this recruitment and Notre Dame. Um, it, it's been surging as well. So a top hundred player per on three, uh, the on three industry ranking um, has them as the number 153 player nationally and the number nine running back. So right now, this is the running back to keep an eye on. And then the other is Darion Dupree for me from Chicago Mount Carmel. Uh, considered a slight Notre Dame lean per the recruiting prediction machine. But, you know, the RPM also has UTSA leading for Kendron Young, and that's not going to happen. Um, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. But, yeah, I mean, it's a Chicago kid. I really liked what I saw from him at Irish Invasion last year. Working on getting back to Notre Dame this spring. He's been in good connection, good uh, contact, I should say, with, with Dylan McCullough. So Dupree, like if Notre Dame were to make a hard push for Dupree, I could definitely see him ending up at Notre Dame. Hearing you talk about running back recruiting makes me think about Dylan McCullough, the running back coach, was apparently getting some NFL looks, but he decided to stay in South Bend, which is great news. And I know for any fan base, including Notre Dame fans, you get uneasy when you see all these coaching changes and Notre Dame has had their fair share here yeah. in the month of February. But the way I look at it, Mike is really, really great coaches is what you want in your staff as a fan and great coaches are going to move to new opportunities. So you may only get great coaches for two, three years. Harry, he is a rare exception. The first time Harry stayed for a longer period of time. So 
keeping McCullough is great, but, you know, eventually he might get a bigger opportunity and he's going to take that opportunity. But I just think you're not going to have great assistants very long. Enjoy while you have them. And Notre Dame is Notre Dame. They're going to replace them with just as good assistant coaches. Yeah, you make a great point in that you're, you know, like a Mike Elston staying in Notre Dame for, uh, you know, a long time. You don't see that a ton. Mm -hmm. Some guys will just latch onto the school and be like, I don't maybe have a ton of coordinator aspirations um, or, you know, like defensive line coaches, running backs coaches, like some of these like spots specifically have a hard time being elevated coordinator. Um, You know, that that's kind of a factor. And then you have like a guy like Jeff Quinn, who you just kind of latch onto a coach and you follow him for 30 years, wherever you go. So there's, that's, you know, just a couple factors of why some coaches can stay a long time, but you know, it's, it's like a, it's a blessing and a curse, you know, when you have on both sides of it, coaches leaving or going, if your coaches are leaving, that stinks. you got good coaches. You don't want to replace them. But if he's, if you have coaches who are not leaving or not getting other jobs and they don't include like a Harry he stand or Jeff Quinn or Mike Gilson, those kind of situations, why aren't they getting poached elsewhere? Are they not good coaches? So, you know, you kind of have both, both sides of the coin, but at the end of the day, Coaches have short shelf lives. Three years is, you know, if you've been at a spot for three years, you're probably gone. I think McCullough's, my guess would be this is probably his last season. I mean, the guy's trajectory is just going, it's just going up. Stucky's the same. Like, I think with those, those were two outstanding hires. Like, I think when you look back at Marcus Freeman's time or his early years at Notre Dame, you're going to look back at those two hires as a first time head coach, be like, damn, that was impressive. Stucky and McCullough, two big time coaches. I think if we're talking about the stock market, they bought very early on Chancey Stucky before he got very expensive. Very early. The stock was a buck and now it's like 10. Like, it seriously, I mean, I mean, I think he was an acting not too long ago or, or, or something. And then he goes and works at his alma mater in the recruiting office. Baylor takes a chance on him, and then Notre Dame scoops him right up. Um, and you got to remember at that time, it was Holman Wiggins, the Alabama receivers coach, and uh, Jameer Shepard, who was at Purdue. Wiggins seemed like the top guy. Um, and then when Notre Dame didn't get him, it seemed to – Irish seemed to pick Stucky over Shepard. Fan base lost its mind, at least on the loose emoji board, uh, blue and gold. I mean, it was like, how could you go with this guy who, let's compare it to recruiting, he's not highly ranked. He's the three-star, and you just picked him over the top 200-ranked four-star, Jameer Shepard. <laughs> Sometimes these things work out, Darren. Yep. Hey, good news is they kept the running back coach, wide receiver coach, safety coach. That's three major wins for Marcus Freeman.